Hi, I'm David from Halo Prints and Frame, based here in Stratford-upon-Avon, and I'm with Permajet this morning just to give you guys a little, few little pointers about mount presentation, uh, the reason why we use mount boards. And we're gonna, if we like, we're gonna call it the three Ps. We're gonna look at protection, presentation, and proportion. And this will hopefully give you a really simple pointer as to why we look to mount our images. So the first point really is protection. And the reason we use, the primary reason, reason for a mount board is that a picture, when placed into a picture frame, needs to be protected by way of the mount board. And what the mount board is going to do is actually separate the printed image from the glass or the glazing product. It might be acrylic, more than likely glass. So what happens if you don't use a mount board and you place an image directly behind glass long term, if you get any moisture into the framed image, that moisture can catch between the glass and the print. That can cause a lamination between the two and ultimately risk damaging a print long term. So the first primary reason for a mount board is to keep the image away from the glass. If you're using photographic papers as opposed to art papers, the risk of that lamination effect is even greater because you tend to work with a gloss, semi-gloss paper, which has a more resinous finish. So the first key point is protection. So then the other reason for the mount board is proportion. So a well-mounted image before framing will create a calming space between the image and what would be the frame. So an ideal setup is that your mounted image has a good proportion of mount board width at the side all the way around. And we tend to keep the proportions the same at the top and the side. And then often we will extend the bottom border uh, usually by about 10%, which will be referred to as bottom weighting. So with this image here, we've got an external mount size of 50 by 40 centimetres. And any camera club uh, photographer will be familiar with that size because it's often used as the maximum external mount size. That 50 by 40 centimetres also represents a standard off the shelf frame size from many homeware stores. So if you want to use an off the shelf frame, 50 by 40 is quite common and a really handy size to use. If you're framing at 50 by 40 centimeters, you're going to be looking to print at roughly A3 size. And if you've got an A3 printer, you might be tempted to maximize your print size and go borderless A3. The thing to be note, uh, mindful there is that if you make the print too big for the mount, what you can end up with is a slightly odd proportion between the image and the mount. So this image here is printed at borderless A3. The external is 50 by 40 centimeters and bringing the two sizes together means that we're slightly sort of out of proportion. We've got narrow borders at the side and we've got wider borders, top and bottom. And what that's gonna do is just simply make the presentation look odd because of the misaligned borders. So with this image, we've still printed on an A3 size paper, but we've brought the image size down. It's roughly about 37 by 28 centimeters. Not so important, but what we have concentrated on is getting a better proportion to the mount board, 65 centimeters on the top and the sides, and 70 centimeters at the bottom, which is roughly that 10% bottom weighting. So hopefully what you can see is that this image here presents better than this image here. Still the same size mount board, both would fit into a 50 by 40 centimeter frame, but this proportion is much more suitable.
Now we're going to look at a different image on a white mount board. And the reason to show you these two mounted images is once again, we're looking at the mismatch on the proportions for an A3 borderless image compared to a sized image to allow a good proportion 65 millimeter mount. The other thing that we find quite commonly with in our picture framing business is that we sometimes see mounted prints come into us for framing where the artist or the photographer has made a signature on the mount board. They may have also put a limited edition number on the mount board. Now, whilst that is good, the customer thinks that they've got a limited edition print. The reason why that's not great is that you should never sign the mount board. If your work is limited edition or you want to sign the image, the print ideally should be made on the image itself. Now, the reason for that is if we go back to the reason for the primary reason for a mount board, which is protection. This mount board is effectively a disposable element. If this gets damaged over time, if the color of the mount board suddenly doesn't become right, then we would have to take the mount board away. And of course, then we lose the signature in any addition number. So just a simple note is that if you are signing your work, it is always far best that you actually sign onto the image itself. Because again, if the mount board has to be replaced, the signature is retained within the image. And have a look about the color of the pen you use. Here we've used a silver pen because it complements the colorway within the image itself. So to sum up, we've looked at the three Ps, protection, presentation, and proportion. Consider those three elements and you will always produce a better uh, presented image. So we've printed all the images today on Permajet Portrait White and the mount boards we've used, they're 50 by 40 centimeter mount boards. And if you're a camera club user, then Permajet actually sell the 50 by 40 centimeter blanks ready for you to cut your own apertures. And of course, when you're cutting those apertures, always be mindful that proportion will always improve your images. Hope that helps. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.